So welcome back uh, after the brief tea break. So before we begin our tutorial session, uh, let me solve uh, just uh, one or just one problem, the ladder problem, the simplest problem, using another approach which is typically done in textbooks. I'll just take five minutes, and then we'll get on with our tutorial session. This is theta angle. See, so this is O, the origin, A, B. This is weight W, this is force P. This problem can also be alternatively solved using another approach and another approach is as follows. We can say that with respect to a fixed coordinate system, it is very important to have a fixed coordinate system which is at the origin here, intersection of these two sides. We can say that the y coordinate of point A is equal to 2L or this is L by 2, L by 2 is equal to L sin theta is the y coordinate. Now note that this is our y axis and this is our x axis. We can also say that the x coordinate of point B is equal to L cos theta. Now this implies that delta y a is equal to L cos theta delta theta and delta x b is equal to minus L sin theta delta theta. Now note one thing that unlike the geometrical approach that we had used earlier, we do not need to take care of the directions up, down, sideways and so on. It just depends on the coordinate system that you are using. Think here the coordinate system here is y is up, x is to the right. So when you say delta y a, delta y a and delta theta, now how is delta theta defined? It is defined like this. If you increase theta, then this is what will happen. Now think about it that if delta theta is positive, then what happens delta y a is L cos delta theta is also positive. As a result what we see is that delta y a go upwards and this is precisely what we will see from here. That if delta theta is positive, delta y a automatically becomes positive. What about delta x b? So delta x b think about it, if delta theta is positive then this point moves inwards and as a result delta x b okay, becomes minus L sin theta delta theta which is negative. So that negative sign is automatically taken care of. We do not have to worry about what is positive, what is negative. And then using principle of virtual work, what we can say is that the W, Y is upwards is positive. So W downwards is negative. So minus W delta Y A, okay, P negative because it is on the other side of X minus P delta X B is equal to 0. Or in other words, what we will get is that, that minus W L W Y A by 2 because this is at the center, okay, the load is at the center. So it will be L cos theta by 2 delta theta. This is minus, this is also minus. So we will get plus P L sin theta delta theta is equal to 0. And so we immediately get our answer that we had obtained early because this is true for any arbitrary delta theta. Okay? So this was another alternative method which is typically also done in the textbooks. So I just wanted to mention that but I still like to go by the geometrical method which I had discussed in the morning because that gives a very, very good feel for the problem whereas this becomes very mechanical and if you are not, uh, if you are not careful enough to choose the origin at a fixed point then the answer that you may get would be complete garbage. Okay? But ultimately it depends on what you are comfortable with and uh, both are equally fine so long as you do them appropriately. So with this much of a preamble, let us move on to tutorial problems, a very, very simple problem. Okay? It will like not take more than 5 minutes. Okay? We will discuss this problem. I will give 5 minutes for you. The two bar linkage shown is supported by a pin 
okay this is a pin connection and the bracket connection at b and d determine the force p okay so this force p is acquired, uh, applied upwards force e which is 100 pounds is applied downwards 150 pounds is applied downwards so what we are asked is that that determine the force p required to maintain equilibrium of the linkage very simple problem the overall virtual displacement is very easy what we are asked to find out is uh, what is this force required to keep this system in equilibrium okay a very simple problem think about it we will take uh, 5 minutes uh, uh, to solve this problem any questions please direct uh, i will be happy to answer via chat okay i can see that uh, many centers have solved this problem so what we realize is this that this particular triangle okay you can clearly have a mechanism like this look at this uh, look at this cylinder here okay uh, this uh, what can happen you have two members which are connected by a pin joint okay and at the collar okay this member is an, an, again connected by a pin joint now what can happen is this okay how do we give the virtual displacement to this structure look at member abc suppose abc and edfc were not connected to each other okay then this clearly becomes a mechanism why a mechanism because free rotation for member abc is possible about joint b if these two are not connected so what we do is that let us give us that rotation delta theta okay what possible mechanism that can happen but now note one thing we can do that but because these two are connected with each other what will happen is that this joint will open up if you give it a virtual rotation of delta theta so what we do is that this joint open up why how will it open up that this point bc c will move exactly downwards okay c will move exactly downwards okay and point a will move exactly upwards okay because it has to move perpendicular to the line joining a and b okay this is the line joining a and b we are rotating this about point a so this will move exactly upwards so this will go up this will go down and if we don't provide any movement to this member then the joint will open up like this so what we do that this delta c will be given by how much okay delta c will be given by this rotation multiplied by this distance rotation multiplied by 8 inches now what do we do this point moved by that much amount so the same displacement that comes here should be provided to this entire mechanism that this rod has to completely translate down by how much amount by this amount that is delta uh, e delta f should be equal to delta c all of them move parallel to each other and this is the ultimate resulting virtual displacement which is completely compatible why because there is no virtual work done at point b in this mechanism there will no virtual work done at this joint there will be no virtual done at the collar why because we are not providing any displacements at this point so only virtual work will be done by this and this and this and how do we get a relation between what should this delta theta and what should be this delta a and what should this delta e be the relation is straightforward that delta a because this is 16 this is 8 if this distance if this displacement is delta c delta a will only be twice of that distance and delta e and delta f okay if you look here they all of them are together so delta a will be two times delta c and all these displacements are equal to delta c so put everything in the principle of virtual work according to our virtual displacement this point okay moved up but the force applied is down so the virtual work done is minus so minus p delta a what about the other loads this is 100 into delta e plus 150 into delta f both are in the same direction now we substitute the relation between them that delta a is equal to 2 times delta c whereas delta e is equal to delta c and both delta f is equal to delta c put everything together we immediately see that p is equal to 125 pounds so the entire trick was in just recognizing that this undergoes some rotation this undergoes pure translation and to prevent this linkage from opening up we need to make sure that this relation is satisfied that delta a should be equal to 2 times delta c once we satisfy that we are done if you try solving this problem using newton's law also not a big deal but you have to draw two free body diagrams but in this case just this one recognition you immediately know okay what the answer should be for the p to maintain this body in equilibrium now let us move on to this uh, second problem okay what do we have is that we have 
a, a mix of linkages ok. So, these are called as something like Nuremberg scissors. So, this is a demonstration that I have taken from demonstrations.wolfram.com and what you will see here is that that this particular mechanism I can decrease the number of scissors ok, increase the number of scissors ok and then we can change whatever size here is, but ultimately what we want to do is we can extend the scissors like this or we can reduce the scissors like this. So, this precisely is the mechanism that I am showing here ok. So, A B, B G, G D, D E ok. So, we have members A B and B C and C D and D E and similarly we have members A H and H C and C F ok and F E ok. So, we have all these members they are connected ok to a hinge support here and they are all connected to each other by points. Note that this B C B G is one complete member, H C is one complete member, C F is one complete member and G D is one complete member ok. So, these are not two force members. Now, these are supported by by uh, at another place by another set of uh, uh, by another hinge or roller uh, hinge or pin connection at point E. Now, to this mechanism we are applying a load of P here, we are applying a load of 2 P here and a force q in the horizontal direction at point d and what we are asked to find out can we find out what is the horizontal reaction ok we have here in the question I have asked to find out what is the complete reaction, but for the time being can we find out what is the horizontal reaction at point e that comes from the applications of these forces ok. Note one thing that this problem can be more easily solved ok using the coordinate approach if we put a at point a a coordinate axis in the x direction coordinate axis in the y direction and then write down appropriate y coordinate for h g x coordinate for d and release this support convert it into a roller and a horizontal reaction at e and correspondingly the x coordinate of point e. Then we do appropriate differentiations find out that if this angle changes ok. Think about it this is a 1 degree of freedom problem that if this angle del theta changes by a small angle ok delta theta which means that this entire angle changes by a small value of delta theta then that change is reflected everywhere ok. So, it is a 1 degree of freedom system. So, if we put a coordinate system here and here in the x and y direction write the appropriate coordinates we can solve this problem quite easily and this is one particular example where we can see the beauty of principle of virtual work. I can have 50 hundred linkages like this if you try solving this problem using Newton's laws moment balance force balance the number of free bodies that will be involved will be phenomenal whereas in this case it will be quite easy to do this problem ok. So, it will be a matter of like just like 4 or 5 lines ok why do not we solve this problem for around between 5 and 10 minutes and then we will get back. So, let us get to the solution of the problem uh, quite a few of uh, centers uh, gave the appropriate answer. So, what we did first release the support keep this uh, roller here, but the uh, so what we did is that this was a pin connection or a hinge connection we replace this with a roller and the corresponding horizontal force. Now, what do we do we put a coordinate axis at x and y this is only 1 degree of uh, freedom system because if you provide a virtual displacement from theta to delta theta it changes uniformly everywhere. So, what we can do is that we can say what is the coordinate of point p it will be minus a sin theta with respect to this fixed coordinate system coordinate of point g again will be equal to minus a sin theta whereas the x coordinate of point d why I am interested in x coordinate because I need to find out that upon giving a small virtual rotation here ok uh, changing this angle how much does the point move in the horizontal direction I do not care about the vertical direction why because this force will not do any work against the vertical direction. So, I am only interested is what in what the horizontal displacement is in this direction. So, we write down it is 1 2 3 4 5 5 a cos theta is the horizontal coordinate of point D. Now, if this is y p delta y p is how much minus a cos theta delta theta let us pause to think about it what is happening here if delta theta is positive then what happens delta theta increases this point will move down even much even more. So, this quantity is what this quantity is become negative and clearly as expected positive displacement uh, up, uh, upward displacement is positive according to the sign convention downward displacement is negative 
So that negative is automatically take care, taken care of here. Similarly, delta y g, same thing will happen. If you increase this angle, this point will go down and that is what is reflected in the negative sign here. x d is 5 a cos theta. So if you do delta x d, it will become minus 5 a sin theta delta theta. Now why this negative here? If you increase this angle, think about it. This entire, this point d will shift inwards. What is our positive convention? In this direction, everything is positive. In this direction, everything is negative. So that negative value is telling us that with increasing delta theta, delta theta being positive, this thing has a value that is negative which means the displacement is in the horizontal direction. Now we apply principle of virtual work, what do we do? This p downwards, so according to sign convention minus p into delta y p, g downwards minus 2 p into delta y g okay? uh, and ultimately q is positive. Okay, because it is in the same direction as x, so q into delta x d. And then without worrying about it is left or right, we just put this value in with all the signs intact. Okay, everything, all the signs should be intact, put it here. And then we solve this, we immediately get what is f e x. Okay, huh. And one thing which I forgot to mention that x e, what is x e? x e is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 cos theta. So delta x e is equal to minus 6 a sin theta delta theta. Again, when delta theta increases, this point E tends to move inwards, that is why this negative sign. And the virtual work now, now is done by this, this, this and this force F E X by our sign convention, okay. It is acting in this direction, outward direction. So we take it as positive, oh I forgot to mention that here. So it should be plus F E X into delta X E, write down all the equations here, okay. This is come here, uh, this comes here, this is known, this is known, this is known. We can solve for it because this is true for arbitrary delta theta and from that we get f e x is this value which most of us have obtained. Okay. So let us move on to this problem. What do we have here? Okay. Little bit tricky, not too difficult problem. We have a mass which is lowered or raised okay, by 4 identical links, 1, 2, and 3 and 4 on the other side. So this mass has a dimension which is coming out of the plane. So 2 is what we can see and 2 exact identical or on the other side. Okay. So what we can do is that we can replace this mass by m by 2 and just consider only the front, uh, the front portion that we can see. And what we are asked is that, that the elevation of this mass is controlled by these hydraulic cylinders which are attached like this. Okay. All the dimensions are given to you. So what is asked is that, that in this particular configuration, when this length is b, okay, what should be the compression in each of the cylinder? So how much force should the cylinders provide for the system to be in equilibrium? Okay. So this is the problem. So do that with principle of virtual work. You can also do that with uh, Newton's laws. Then these are two force members. You have to solve everything. But you will see that this particular problem is much more elegantly solved using principle of virtual work. Once you realize what the geometry is, what the displacements, what the angles are, it is a matter of just three lines and you will get the answer. Okay? So any questions about this problem or the previous problem, please feel free to direct to me. We will take 10 more minutes okay? and then we will come back to this problem. So we get back to the problem. So this solution is one of the older solutions that I had written. It is not the most optimal. But the point here is this. Okay, first we have to figure out the full geometry. Okay, many, many colleges, uh, many centers have already solved it. So this is B, this is B. So these two angles will be the same alpha. So because sum of all the angles is 180 degrees, we immediately find out that alpha is equal to pi by 2 minus theta by 2. Now note one thing, that to raise or lower this mass, what you have to do? In this case, the virtual displacement is provided in such a way that this mass is actually lowered. Okay? And because of that, what happens? This hydraulic cylinder is replaced by the corresponding force that it is being, uh, that it is applying f of h. Now when we lower, so once we remove the hydraulic cylinder, note one thing, that this entire assembly becomes a mechanism. You remove this hydraulic cylinder, you remove this hydraulic cylinder. Okay? By symmetry, okay? we are again exploiting the symmetry because this assembly is symmetric. We are saying that if the force in this is f h, this also has to be f h. So we are using only one half part of this. Okay? That is one thing to note. Because otherwise, the number of unknowns present in the system are quite a bit. Okay? But the only reason why we are using is, is that there is a symmetry also about the central axis. So we look only at one part. Now think about it. 
when we release this hydraulic cylinder this assembly uh, this entire mechanism uh, this entire thing becomes a mechanism and as a result we can push it down and we keep that in mind while providing the virtual displacement we provide the virtual displacement the same as is there in this mechanism how do we, what what happens is that this point d moves to d prime okay if this angle is theta this angle is theta if the rotation in this is delta theta then again the rotation in this also has to be delta theta now note that this is a fixed point e and if the rotation in this case is delta theta which in this case is in the anti clockwise is in the clockwise direction then what we need to find out that what is the displacement of this point b along this direction okay what is the displacement of point b along the direction of the hydraulic cylinder y because only that component of the displacement does any work now we recall what we had done that we want to find out that what is uh, in uh, that along this direction how does it move so what do we do we draw this line and drop a perpendicular from point e okay where uh, about which we are rotating this rod be draw a perpendicular like this drop it here so this distance is nothing but b sin alpha okay this is b sin alpha but what was alpha alpha was pi by 2 minus theta by 2 so this virtual displacement along this will be nothing but b sin alpha okay into delta theta but since alpha is equal to pi by 2 minus theta 2 that b sin alpha will become b cos theta by 2 so immediately what do we say that the displacement along this direction is nothing but b cos theta by 2 into delta theta so now we know that what is the virtual displacement along this we also want to know what is the virtual displacement for this mass so it is very simple there are two ways of doing this one is we just write down the y coordinate for this so what is the y coordinate for this with respect to this fixed axis the y coordinate b b theta so for point d y d is equal to 2b sin theta as a result delta y d is also equal to 2b cos theta delta theta since we are decreasing the delta theta this becomes negative and y delta y d actually comes down so we can do it this way but delta y d is equal to 2b cos delta theta downwards for the virtual displacement that we had provided so now we have delta y which is 2 cos theta b delta theta we have delta or the displacement virtual displacement along the hydraulic cylinder which is b cos theta by 2 delta theta put everything together use principle of virtual work you will see that force in the hydraulic cylinder will be w cos theta into cos theta by 2 okay so this problem becomes so much more simple when you use it uh, solve it using principle of virtual work it will not be that difficult if you use uh, newton's uh, newton's laws also principles of equilibrium but then you have to draw multiple free body diagrams and do the balance whereas here you get the answer in one shot so there is one question from 1331 that the concept that we have used for ep is not convincing okay so let us see if i can convince them so as far as this is concerned this is a triangle okay uh, E B. So let us look only at this portion. Okay, only at the portion which is below this. This is the force in the hydraulic cylinder F H. This angle is theta. This angle is alpha. This angle is alpha. So what I had said is that that the displacement. Okay, we we have line E B, and for line E B we are giving. a virtual rotation okay along the direction in the clockwise direction now what we know clearly is that this point b if i draw it separately here 
because of this rotation it will have a displacement which is approximately perpendicular okay so this angle is 90 degrees but this is the line of action of force so this delta is equal to b times delta theta now what we want to know that this angle was alpha okay so this will be 90 minus alpha and this will be equal to alpha so what do we have here so we have here we can write it in a different way that if i magnify this portion you will see that this is this is delta which is b uh, which is equal to b times delta theta and this length will be nothing but delta into sin alpha which will be equal to then the displacement along this line will be nothing but equal to b delta theta sin alpha or equivalently it is equal to b sin alpha delta theta but just note one thing what is this b sin alpha this b sin alpha is nothing but if this is b b sin alpha is essentially this distance and what this is telling you is that that if you had a rigid body like this then any point along this line okay if you have a big rigid body like this to which we are giving a small rotation in the clockwise direction then any point along this line will have a displacement in this direction only given by b sin alpha delta theta so if this is uh, this geometry is not clear just draw it again you will see that there are two ways of doing this first it is to recognize that if the rotation for this eb happens about point e then the relative displacement will be perpendicular to the original line and then draw the angles and then find out that what is the corresponding component along this direction of fh that we want or the other way is that we know what is the line of action of this force so from point e drop a perpendicular here and this distance multiplied by delta theta you will see that it is also exactly equal to what is the displacement of this point along this direction so both are equivalent ways of doing it whatever you find convenient just think about it and it will become clear you have to just draw the appropriate figures and then interpret that accordingly so if that is clear then kindly send a chat message we'll have one last query before we move on to the next problem so this is a matter of geometry okay so if you are not comfortable in case right now it's just a matter of sitting down drawing the figures if you just stare at it for half an hour everything will become perfectly clear so it's just how much you stare at it okay i'm almost sure that most of you know all these things but in case things are not clear or for example that there is some ambiguity the slides are there just stare at them just if you stare at them for half an hour everything will become clear the idea is that when you remove some support if you remove some hydraulic reaction the assembly becomes a mechanism and you want to provide virtual displacement to that uh, assembly in such a way that the way the mechanism will deform that should be your virtual displacement and then you also don't want to change the lengths of any members neither do you want to open up any link okay and when you satisfy all these criteria you can move individual members and then deform the and then uh, give appropriate virtual displacements virtual angles in such a way that the criteria about no length no member should change its length any joints you don't open them if you satisfy that then you have your virtual displacement where the only work is done by the given forces and a force that you are interested in finding out so the idea is in recognizing that this becomes a mechanism and then figuring out how the, how will that mechanism deform okay we will move on to this this problem is a bit involved okay but i leave it to you for uh, your own thinking when you go back not really involved but but it requires some time so what we do, do now is we look at this mechanism so the claw of a remote action actuator develops a clamping force c as a result of the tension p in the control rod so what we are doing is that that this is an assembly where in this configuration you try to pull on this rod p and when you try to pull on this rod p what will happen is that this will try to clamp in and if you keep some uh, uh, if you keep some material here for example then this will try to clamp in on that material and that material in turn will exert reaction c c symmetrically on the two jaws and what you are asked to find out that for uh, for uh, under the application of this force p what will be the clamping force at the jaws and all the assembly is given to you 
Okay. So, think about this problem. Okay. You can use some coordinate systems and so on or you can visualize this appropriately and get the answer. Okay. It's, it requires some thinking, but not that much. We will uh, take 10 minutes for this and after that we will uh, discuss this problem. If you have any questions about this problem or any other problems, please send a request on chat and uh, we can see if we can discuss there or we can discuss after, uh, after the end of 10 minutes. Okay. So, I can see that uh, many centers have solved the problem properly. There is one simple way to solve this problem. So, what we do is that we know that the virtual work should be equal to 0. So, what is this? We give the virtual displacement. Okay. I have not drawn a figure here, but look at this top jaw. Okay. If we pull on this, okay, what happens? If we pull on this one, okay, suppose we put a virtual displacement to this entire assembly that let this be pushed outwards. Okay. Let this be pushed outwards or let this be put, push inwards, whatever way, it does not matter. So, if we take this, push it inwards by little way, little bit, what happens? This angle has to change. As a result, this will rotate and when this rotate, to maintain all the compatibility at all the joints, this member also has to rotate. Now, if this member rotate, this upper jaw by an angle delta theta, then you will immediately see that this delta E, okay, this point E which is connected here will also move up okay, by an amount how much C plus D delta theta, whereas this jaw will move by an amount B times delta theta. So, what does that mean? That would mean that delta A which is the vertical displacement here is equal to b divided by d plus c. Okay. So, b divided by d plus c, why? Because this will be b delta theta, this vertical displacement will be c plus d delta theta. And so, you take the ratio and what you will see is that, that delta a will be equal to b by d plus c into delta e. So, we have a relation that we want to find out what is the virtual work done by this force and this force. So, we need to find out what is delta a and that is what we get here. So, delta A we get in terms of delta E, but now this is not enough. Why? Because ultimately the work done at this force P will be P times delta C. What is delta C is how much this distance change by that will be this the change in this length that will be delta C. So, P times delta C will be the work done here. So, we need to actually express delta E which is this vertical uh, virtual displacement in terms of the horizontal virtual displacement delta c. To do that, we recognize that point b can slide only upwards. Okay. This can slide only sideways. So, this is very much like the ladder problem that this can only go upwards, this can only go sideways. So, what we know is that that e square plus c square is equal to length of this link. So, we can use calculus and say that delta this is 0 because the length of the link should not change. So, 2 e delta e is equal to minus 2 c delta c or we then get a relation between delta e and delta c. So, now we know delta a in terms of delta e, we know delta e in terms of delta c. So, what is the virtual work? Virtual work done will be 2 c into delta a plus p into delta c. Okay. So, 2 c into delta a plus p into delta c substitute everything here okay, because delta a is now expressible in terms of delta c. Since it is true for any arbitrary delta c, you will see that compression will come out to be p by 2 into e d plus c divided by b c simple geometry. Okay. So, are there any questions on the chat about this? So, it seems that uh, this problem is pretty clear to everyone. Now, this problem okay, is uh, a somewhat interesting problem. So, what we have is that we have an assembly what is used to crush stones for example, crush rocks. Now, how is this assembly there? We have one member, two member, three member, four member, they are pinned here and they are connected by hinge support at the top point. Now, what is the mechanism? That there is a hydraulic assembly which is pushing against these members. What is the pressure? Okay. P1 is 100 MPa here, P2 is equal to 60 MPa here. The diameters of the pistons here are given as 100 millimeters. This angle is 30 degrees. Now, what happens is that, that when you apply this force, this will try to extend, okay. this angle 30 will tend to decrease and as a result it will uh, increase uh, exert some force here, maybe horizontal and vertical both. Okay. It is not clear immediately. So, it can exert a vertical and horizontal force here. 
because of those forces this AB B will try to go down this angle 10 will uh, tend to decrease and this point C will tend to I am not thinking it will it will tend to crush the rock ok. So, ultimately what do we want is that that there will be some force F that will be exerted here we replace this rock with that force F and we want to provide a virtual displacements to this, to this structure in such a way that the only work is done by the moment here delta D by the moment here delta E because these forces are known we only want the horizontal displacement here and here because these forces are known and what is the what is the displacement here why because we have replaced this rock and so in the absence of rock this is the mechanism and the way this mechanism will deform is the same way we want to give small virtual displacements and then use principle of virtual work where the work will be done here here and here sum should be 0 and that will give us force on the rock. So, we will take just 5 minutes then we will briefly discuss the solution. Now, this problem just a little bit tricky not too much just think about it ok if you have uh, your full screen put on ok I want to make some hand gestures I did not know I could make them but apparently I can. So, look at the top assembly F D E it will form one triangle like this and a bottom triangle like this if you give this assembly a virtual uh, rotation ok uh, a virtual displacement how by changing this angle ok just a bit if you change the angle just a bit what happens this point B will move down ok this point D uh, uh, this point B will move down ok how much amount you can calculate that because we have done enough problems we can easily figure out how much uh, distance it will move down by ok. Now what happens what will happen to point D and E when you put a virtual displacement point D and E both come inside in the horizontal direction ok both vertical and horizontal directions will be present but because this force is horizontal we only care about what is the horizontal displacement of D and E. So, what happens is that you have this rhombus ok it the point B goes down point D and E they come in and they also go down we worry only about the horizontal displacement of D and E. But now what happens if point B goes down point B is common to AB and BC also. So, we cannot do that we cannot provide a virtual displacement where only point E moves down because then there will be a gap between these two assembly. So, how do we clear that gap we clear that gap by also providing a virtual displacement in such a way that for the bottom assembly point B also moves down ok point B also moves down how much does it moves down by that how much distance this point B moves down from the top assembly is the same distance this bottom point B should move down by. But then what happens just note our ladder problem that for the virtual work uh, for the virtual work problem we had done previously if this point is free to move horizontally then this top point B will not only move downwards but it will also move sideways just look at the figure we had previously for the the, the uh, for the uh, problem where there was a piston here that the point B will not only move down it will also move sideways then what happens then we can match the vertical displacement of point B coming from the top assembly and the vertical displacement of point B coming from the bottom assembly, but the horizontal gap still remains and to take care of that horizontal gap what should we do now is that we should take this entire assembly ok and rotate it rigidly about point F ok the entire assembly rigids about point F how much does it rotate by by an amount so as to clear this gap. But as a result what happens initially point D and point E both by symmetry had the same horizontal displacement, but now because of this rotation you will see that one point D has more displacement other point D has less displacement and as a result the virtual work components that come from here will not have the same virtual displacements and they will differ. You look at this figure ok when you go back you look at in leisure ok all the entire uh, uh, so solution is given to you, but if you use the coordinate system put a coordinate system here put this theta delta theta you will never realize that this rigid body rotation should also be present in order to make sure that there are no internal gaps and when you put that you will see that the virtual work equation will look like this and the P which is the force that is exerted at the rock will be equal to F1 plus F2 where F1 is the force exerted by one hydraulic cylinder F2 is the force exerted by the either hydraulic cylinder tan theta tan alpha are all given this is theta this bottom is alpha ok plus F1 minus F2 by 4 
and this term, this rigid body rotation that is required for the virtual displacement becomes only important when f1 is not equal to f2, otherwise you will not even see this. But when f1 is not equal to f2, that will contribute and the virtual displacement will be, will be three components. The top one has an angle change like this, the bottom one has an angle change like this and a sliding and to match that gap, this entire assembly should rotate and get fixed here. Okay. These three components of virtual displacement, when you put them together, you will see a final assembly which, which looks like this green line okay. and from that, okay, stare at this, if you already have not figured it out, you will see that this work will be done, this work will be done and ultimately this point C also moves sideways. So the unknown force here will also do work and all these three together will do some work and we get the final answer. Now a disclaimer here that this problem is much easier solved using Newton's law, but this problem is given precisely to show that what possible virtual displacement can be present in the system if you want to solve a particular problem using this method. So it is a very clear cut demonstration that how different geometry changes in a mechanism can happen. When we remove this thing, these are the mechanistic, uh, these are the mechanism kind of geometry changes that happen and how to incorporate them all together in order to visualize that in the absence of this, what particular mechanism does this collapse to and then use that particular mechanistic collapse to find out what are the virtual displacements at various points, use principle of virtual work to get our appropriate answers. Okay. So I hope that uh, in the lecture, okay, I have converted the beauty and power of virtual work at least to some extent to most of you. Okay. If you still have some concerns, to still have some confusions, okay, you can write to me on the chat, you can write to, write to me on Moodle okay, and we will see if we can answer those questions and can answer uh, those doubts. Okay, so the entire next week, we are going to do dynamics, we will do kinetics, kinematics of particles, kinetics, kinematics of rigid bodies okay, and hopefully have a lot of fun doing that. Okay. So have a good day.